we, we decided that the next album was gonna be more raw and more blackish and more metal. Or otherwise people think we are getting old. Which we are, but we are old and angry. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. In the name of So Marcus, thank you so much for your time today. Are you excited that you're doing a full album again over the pandemic? You know, uh, with uh, Insomnium, we saw uh, the release of some singles and then collected on an EP, different, different approach to release music. Now we're back to normal with a full album. Uh, it, you've done different uh, uh, ways of doing it now. What's your preference? Yeah, well, True that uh, I almost you know, forgot the EP already because the whole pandemic time that just feels like it's ten years and uh, you don't yeah, anymore yeah. remember what happened in the middle. But yeah, with the Argent Moon, it was the same thing. Like we wanted to do an EP just at the beginning of pandemic, and then it again took like ages to because of the vinyl release. So we would have wanted to release it already in 2020, but then it was released a year later or something. And then it was released by this new pop culture single by single releases. And I'm I'm more old school myself. I like I buy vinyls and CDs. I don't even have Spotify. I'm dinosaur in that sense. <laughs> in fact, we are releasing one album and also EP at the same time because because of the pandemic, there was so much time to write music, even so we did that much of album stuff. So we decided to also release this song of the dusk at the same time, because it looks like we are uh, raising ourselves too much. But it's like saying we had too much stuff, which was good enough for releasing. So we didn't yeah. want to get that from some Japanese bonus or something like that. It's an actual EP. And it's part of the same story, so... Now that you mentioned the story, uh, let's go into that a little bit more. Uh, this is uh, this is in fact one story, this is a concept album. Now it's not that the band has never done concept albums before, but this is very much strictly following um, the word that Nilo has written. Um, uh, he described it already in another interview as every song is a chapter and this tells part of the story. So um, when bands put out true concept albums, um, often the experience for people that were the writers of that story and the people in the band that are not necessarily the writers of that story, there can be different experiences what's that like for you like i know that you obviously you know write a lot of the music but does the story matter to you a lot or are you a little bit more separated of that it's a bit the uh, same than we did uh, with winter's gate exactly yeah. which was our first concept or story album but it was mainly like nilo had this idea for the story the story wasn't ready yet and then he just gave us like the team and then the team kind of inspired me to write music and yeah. as, the, as the concept story was so dark and miserable, of course, this album <laughs> came out to be more dark and miserable because of inspired of that story. And we yeah. built the both things like uh, at the same time, story and the music. And as some rock opera would be like the story would be first ready and then you would compose the music for that. But that's not the case in these situations. <laughs> We saw you play here in Toronto in March uh, with Omnium Gatherum. Um, mm. But I when you're going, you. there you go. Thank you. We love you. We love to have you every time. Um, now that you're going to start, you know, promoting after this album comes out and you're on the promotion, it's going to be a busy summer festival year for you as well. Um, you have a lot of music to promote. Um, and you're gonna always have to make choices. There's gonna be certain classics that you want to put in a set list. Translating a concept album to a live set where you can 
in most cases won't have the time to play a full story back to finish. Is that then weird when as an artist you've been so close to this whole thing and it is one story? Like you've had the experience with the, the, the last two albums, let's say, because they were both sort of concept albums. Um, what's that like for you as an artist? Like, is that then weird to all of a sudden, well, well, this song might work well in the set early, but it's really the end of the story. So it doesn't make sense. That's a good, good question. <laughs> Because with Winter's Gate, it was, of course, it was only one song, so it was easy. We just played the song, yeah. or we didn't play the song. It was the full story. But kind of this album is more like a music album. So yeah, we're not gonna, or I think we are not gonna be, but we haven't even spoke about this yet because the gigs are still in the future. For but sure. I would think we are not going to play this full album as a whole. So just pick up the songs, but that is a good good question like uh, can you can you like uh, play in the set list some ending song before the first song on this album i think yeah. it's it's a tricky question and that kind of we should go with the timeline so so probably we just start with the intro song the anno 1696 or what was yeah, the song yeah. name and then end up with the rapids or song of the north or something like that and of yeah, course yeah. we have to play the old classics and for example, the next next tour we are doing, it's going to be the North American tour with the Enslaved. Co-head. Yeah, with Enslaved cool, and so. uh, Black Anvil. Yeah, cool, cool lineup. I love it. So probably we cannot play the full story on that set list because there's another plan bands in the evening <laughs> playing also yeah, yeah, yeah. Enslaved full set too. So we have to do kind of the best of both worlds. Song of the sun. There's not gonna be any actors, <laughs> so it's just a rock and roll. So there's not gonna be a witch or any witch hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably not. Of course, never say never because we haven't decided yet <laughs> what's happening. For sure, for sure. Now, you wouldn't be the first al- uh, You wouldn't be the first band in history to that has a story like that. That at some point does translate that to either a full blown like. Um, almost like, a, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but like a Broadway show or a movie or something like that. Um, I'm sure Probably Nilo has some hood. crazy ideas. Is that something that you would have on the bucket list at all? Uh, we've been just joking about that during the whole whole theater play at the live shows, but yeah, there's really not that much ideas yet to make this, but I don't know if Nilo is already selling the story to some Broadway <laughs> musical. <laughs> Haven't told us anything yet, but... We well, then you have to just learn the dance moves as well for the musical. Oh, yeah. Or just do the low-budget version as a rock and roll live show. So, Yanni is the witch and... <laughs> I don't know, Nilo is the witch hunter and I can be whatever... Snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, now that you mentioned witches and witch hunter and what have you, um, uh, the, the the story is inspired by uh, a number of true events that made um, that year or the years surrounding uh, 1696 uh, in Scandinavia and, and, and Finland. Um, you know, we saw witch trials and and, and, and and some pretty dark sides of humanity, which seems to always be a recurring theme for, for not just this band that you're in, but for many bands that you play with. Um, is it um, not everybody that's going to listen to these songs or that's going to buy the album or that's coming to your show is going to necessarily delve into the full story. So um, is it always important for you as a band that yes, okay, we are writing a story, a concept album, but you know, every song has to be relatable to the dark side of humanity today? Well, I am the music guy, so for me, it's not important. Nilo is the guy doing the story and lyrics, and for Nilo, it's of course really important. And yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's in between. Of course, I we truly know that not everyone is going to check out the story. It's for same for me. Like when I bought the album of Nostradamus by Judas Priest, I was exactly. more interested about the music and not the story. And yeah, yeah. I still haven't read the story because it just didn't seem like interesting. But I do hope that our story will seem like interesting and. Yeah, that's yeah. some really Nilo did a lot of research for the Finnish history and that's yes. at the same time it's just really cool fantasy story but at the same time it tells 
about Finnish history and history of mankind and that so it's it's interesting in many levels so a more varied album than than we've seen at times in the past is it now when you're in your 25th anniversary year um, is it a little easier to just do different things do you feel less bound by expectation uh, kind of of course at the, at the, this time of this moment of time people have more and more expectation towards insomnium more than ever because yes. the band is growing but at the same time we with the winter's gate album we kind of felt that we bought our artistic freedom because it was 40 minute single song yeah. because we called it commercial suicide and so century media our label called it too but <laughs> That, and that was the, our most successful release until that. So that kind of showed us that we can do whatever we want to and mm. what we ever feel we ourselves are happy with. Then. And that's that's the way to go. You have to be honest as yourself as a music writer. And and with like past releases, Heart Like a Grave was more like a usual Insomnium album. Normal songs and just like every sto song was our own story. and. Then Argent Moon, we did this. It was more like mellow ballad kind of album, Pan pandemic ballads or something like that. <laughs> and already when we did the Argent Moon EP, we decided that the next album is gonna be more raw and more blackish and more metal. Or otherwise, people think we are getting old, which we are, but we are old and angry. We were thinking about productional side that we just wanted something a bit different and we love to work with Jens Booker and with Heart Like a Grave, but he's he's mixing so many good albums at the same time. So we just, we wanted to have a different kind of soundscape for this album and more yeah. like organic, somehow like from the black metal scene, a little bit borrowed and Jamie Gomez felt like natural for that because Jamie really loves like natural sounds, not much drum triggering and he yeah, doesn't yeah. want to reamp the guitar, so it's more like old rock and roll vibe on producing album, and that's what we were after. And I think that's what yeah. Jamie managed to do really well. And yeah, yeah. so uh, it, it does it then feel like one of the more one of the more fresh albums that you've ever recorded, which is ironic in you know in a later stage in your career. I'm not saying that your career is at the end, by far, far from it, um, <laughs> but you are 25 years uh, doing yeah. this now. Um, uh, Every one of us is over Was this, was this like the rejuvenation album, if you will? Well, this album was really, really hard to get together. After the, after the pandemic EP, there was really like a miserable mood in the band with all the okay. pandemic. Of course, they, probably the whole world felt the same. Right. And at, at some point we even felt like, can we even get this album done? So, and at the same time, that maybe he gave again, new boost of freedom, just like, what the hell, if this is going to be like the last album or this not going to be even released, then we just do what we want. And like yeah, we always yeah. do, and it's boring to repeat the same old things. So, and I think that's the combination of things, how this album sounds like. Yeah, something yeah, yeah. new, something old, something borrowed, something blue. Uh, we mentioned touring before, you mentioned that uh, you love Toronto. I don't know if that is because in Toronto these days there's over 70 different uh, breweries uh, in the city, uh, but I do know that you love your beers. Um, in North America here we see um, every, every band these days bring out multiple collaboration beers and craft beer scene has exploded in North America. Um, we, it's been a while, I think, since we've seen an update on your, on your Insomnium Hellas beer. Um, th there was, there was a brew, uh, but what, what's going on there? You must have more plans being such a uh, beer well, aficionado. That is, that is true that I'm really a craft beer man and I love brewery hoping on tours and I love my craft beer and Really enjoyed the project of doing the Insomnium Helles with our local brewery, which is my good French brewery. And but then after that, we did Omnium Gatherum West Coast IPA with another brewery. So I've been active. So there's already third beer, third OG beer in the works. 
but head. So this this beer thing is going hot at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. only too bad that we are living in Finland, which is kind of like a strict with all the alcohol from policies and like import policies. So so far these beers have only been available in Finland, and I don't even know if it's possible for in our level to like get this exported to outside Finland. But maybe we should use some Toronto brewery to make Canadian beer. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, at the very least, next time, which will be in March, uh, no, it will be in April. Uh, April eighth, oh. I believe, is the show that uh, that oh, you're playing in, in Toronto. I'm some new in April, so I will be there twice. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So next time that we do an interview, we'll do it at a brewery and we'll uh, we'll taste some local beers. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, awesome. Depending on how you count, we're either right now in the 25th anniversary of the band since the foundation, uh, which means that the first release is going to turn 25 years uh, pretty soon. Um, so is, you know, the melancholy or the nostalgia at times in your music might suggest that milestones like that and looking back on your own legacy is something the band would like to do. Um, is that so? Um, is is there like, you know, we should are you already thinking about, okay, we need to start building this amazing celebration for 30 years of the band? Or is that something that's absolutely not on your mind? Uh, well, usually we are not that much into nostalgia, but the funny thing with this question was like, uh, we were in fact thinking because what is it coming like already 20 years from uh, the first album? Oh yeah. In the halls of the wedding. And, and it was indeed, this year was the 25th anniversary of Insomnium. And we were just speaking with our management that we might want to celebrate our 25th anniversary. But our manager said, don't do that because it makes you look old. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> really In some news kind of band, we might look like we think very far ahead in the future, but we are never, we are never doing that. Something is always going with his own weight and so that's why I still cannot say if the North American tour will be a nostalgia ride or just new stuff so we live more in the moment than just try to live more for the future than for the past all right Even past okay. is alive there you go all right well um we'll see uh when uh you guys play uh with enslaved and with black anvil uh on your North American tour we'll see if it turned out to be more of a present or or uh nostalgic show um and uh, we'll catch up with you on the road and we will grab some local craft beers and catch up uh properly in person then thank you so much for your time today i really appreciate it thank you for this interview this was a pleasure and see you in canada you are awesome for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel